Good morning, dear students. In the last module, we had introduced the concept of unity vectors with the help of which a vector can be represented in unit vector form and it becomes easy to work with vectors in that way. Prior to that we had also said when a vector is multiplied with a scalar the direction gets unaffected and the magnitude alone gets multiplied that is why the unit vector representation also has become easier for us. For example, you have got a vector A multiplied with some scalar m. This means it only multiplies the magnitude of the vector A, direction remaining the same. And you can represent the unit vector way of representing the its whole magnitude is this, or sometimes you can write simply as m A into A cap. Suppose this is in the x direction, then we can write i there any other way also it can be represented there. So, if you now want to understand the vectors, how vectors are to be multiplied, then we can also make use of this unit vector representation in that. Before going to that, let us understand what is meant by multiplication of vectors. Multiplication of vectors means multiplying one vector with another vector. Multiplying a vector with a scalar just now as we told you has no much effect other than just magnitude getting multiplied, direction is not getting affected. When a vector is multiplied with a vector, what happens? This is what is to be understood now. Multiplication of vector with a vector. There is a difference between addition and multiplication. I think you know this basic arithmetics. When you are adding, the two quantities which you are adding should be of the same type. For example, suppose you want to add 100 rupees to 10 rupees, it is simply 110 rupees we say. Rupees 110 we say directly scalar can be added. So, all these or whatever you added now, this also must be rupees, that also must be rupees, then only you can do it. For example, you have 100 rupees and 10 dollars suppose, you cannot add this direct, directly, you cannot do this operation directly. You have to put this rupees also into dollars or the dollars into rupees and then only add them. That means, same type of quantities only can be added. So, when you add up like that, what you get here as a sum will be also the same type. If you add rupees, you must only add rupees and what you get also is rupees only there. You cannot get anything else. So, therefore, adding rupees to rupees only is yes, giving rupees, same type of quantities can be added and when in the process of addition, what you get also will be the same type of quantities. If you apply this in the physical process also, if there is a vector called force, you are adding another force to it, you are only going to get another force, which is the sum of these two forces, there is also a force. If these two must be forces, that must also be a force, then only addition can be done. You cannot multiply, you, you cannot add a force to a velocity. Suppose force is F, velocity is V, this operation is not valid, you cannot do it, they must be the same type of physical quantities. That is what we mentioned in the, in the module on dimensions also mentions the same thing. The nature of the physical quantity which are added in the equation should be the same. They cannot have different natures. Different physical quantities, different definitions cannot be added like that. The question of multiplication is not like that. When you multiply something with something else, there are two things. Say for example, uh, you multiply force and distance. You can do this multiplication, this process, process is possible. Because when you multiply force with the distance, what you are going to get will be entirely different physical quantity, which is neither force nor distance. Such a thing is possible. Like for example, if you take arithmetically, I want to show you 3 into 2, suppose you will get 6. This 6 is neither 2 nor 3, it is something different totally. 
a different number comes there. Likewise, when two physical quantities are multiplied, this one physical quantity suppose, the other physical quantity suppose. If they are multiplied, what you are going to get will be entirely a new physical quantity may be there. Something else may be there here. That will be totally different. That is why we call this as a product of this, produced from this. The, the new thing is produced from these two things. That is why we call it as a product. So, what is going to be produced then when a vector is multiplied with a, with a vector? What are we going to get? We get a product. Product vector. We, we call it product. What is the product? It will be another physical quantity. Whether this physical quantity is going to be a vector or a scalar depends upon the nature of the product that is coming there, nature of the involvement involved in the multiplication there. Like for example, I give an example from the uh, chemistry for you to understand. There is one thing called sulfur dioxide, you all know. Similarly, there is another thing which is called sulfur trioxide. I think you know. This is also sulfur and oxygen, this is also sulfur and oxygen. But this is entirely different compound from this. The properties are totally different. This is different chemical, this is different chemical altogether. Compound. What happened? Same material is there inside, but the interaction between them is different. Sulfur and oxygen are interacting to form a new compound here in two different forms. In this way you are getting sulfur dioxide, in this way you are getting sulfur trioxide. Likewise, anything else can be there. So, the ingredients only, only do not uh, decide this. What sort of reaction is going on between them? Even though in the so called reactants are the same, the nature of reaction taking place, the nature of the chemical process involved also tells you what product is going to come up there. Similarly, in physics also, if we do not call it as a reaction, we call it as interaction here. A similar word, we call it interaction. There are two physical quantities, suppose A and B. These are physical quantities. What you are going to get out of them when you multiply, you may get maybe C. Some things must come here. Whether this is going to be a vector or a scalar depends upon the operation that is involved in between, the nature of multiplication involved there, the nature of interaction involved there. That is why this product can be of two types, either it can be a scalar or it can be a vector. Now, we are going to define, if it is a scalar, how it will be, how to get the value of the product. If it is going to be a vector, how it will be, we are going to discuss. For that, presently, we talk about the first scalar. We call that as scalar product or we call it as the dot product. We want to show it like this. Suppose there is a vector A you multiply with another vector b and you are going to get some scalar suppose as the product. We show the multiplication with the sign. You know multiplication can be shown, shown in different ways. You can show brackets like that. You can show multiplication like that. You can dot like that. You can square brackets can be shown. Different varieties of showing the multiplication symbol is there in mathematics. Here, if you are going to get a scalar when two vectors are multiplied, we are going to choose only one notation always that is dot. That is why we call it as dot product. If you write A dot B, it means there are two physical quantities A and B which are being multiplied such that we are going to get a scalar there. The interaction is going to give a scalar there. Then what will be the value of the scalar? The value of the scalar is A B cos phi. That is the notation. That is the definition what we have. So, a scalar product of two vectors is defined like this. What is this phi? It is the angle between the two vectors. Suppose there are two vectors like this. This is A, this is B, then that is phi. Then the multiplication of these two vectors giving rise to a scalar will have a magnitude, will have only magnitude. That scalar magnitude is A, B cos phi, given by that. That is the definition for the multiplication of the vectors to give you scalar. How vector comes, we shall see in the next module, not here. Let us understand this 
product very clearly first. When will such a thing come? Where are such provisions coming up? Example, unless you know the example, you will not know. Suppose there is a body, there is a force applied like this, and the body moves in this way, the displacement here in this direction, the force is F applied there. It is applied at an angle theta or phi. Just like a, 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 coy, a toy cart like that, a body is pulled with a force in the direction with a string attached there, it moves along this direction. What is happening? A work is done. This work is a scalar quantity. Work in physics is a scalar quantity. That work done is defined as coming from the force and the displacement. If it goes for longer distance, more work will be done. If it goes for lesser distance, less work will be done. If you apply greater force, more work can be done. If you apply lesser force, less work can be done. All these things are involved. Anyway, so that for the work done, which is going to be a scalar quantity, depends upon the force and the displacement taking place. Those two things are giving rise to the so-called work. That means a physical quantity called a force and displacement interacting with each other give rise to a new physical quantity, a new product, and that is called work. So we write this in physics like this: work is equal to F dot S. Where S is a physical quantity called displacement, F is a physical quantity called force, and they have two different directions with an angle between them as alpha uh, phi there. Therefore, the work done is given by F S into cos phi. This is a definition for the work. Work is defined like this in physics. So to understand this definition, this understand a physical quantity called work, these two vectors when they multiply we get a scalar how will be the scalar in magnitude there he is to be defined according to the principles of vectors given by the definition there like that many examples can be given as and when you go across studying new physical quantities you will be knowing about them anyway presently try to take them in this way so one example i give you just for a, to understand now actual physical quantities what you are going to study there are quite a many we can't put everything here at this stage one example for you to get interested about the matter i gave here let us take that and further go ahead. So, the product of two vectors giving a scalar is defined as a dot b is equal to a b cos phi. What is a b cos phi? If you can see, see what is a b cos phi? You can write this a b cos phi as a into b cos phi or you can also write it as a cos phi into b. After all, they are scalars only a is a magnitude b is a magnitude cos phi also is a ratio a simple magnitude so you can put anyone before anyone later it makes no difference so you can write like this also so that means b cos phi means you can see if you draw a line perpendicular here this will be b cos phi the vector component in this direction the component of that vector in this direction b cos phi. Similarly, if you take a cos phi, so if you call this as m, this is n, this is a and in that direction what we sorry this is a so in that direction if you call this o o m is b cos phi similarly o n is a cos phi you can see that so a dot product means it is the magnitude of a multiplied with the b cos phi component of the other vector in the direction of the first so, some of that, uh, the, the product of that gives you the dot product. So, a dot product of two vectors is given as this product of the magnitude of the one and the component of the other in the direction of the first. B cos phi is the component of B along A in this direction. So, similarly, you can interpret this also. Magnitude of B into the component of A along B direction. In whatever you say, 
they don't have this direct product doesn't have any direction it is scalar therefore you call a b cos y or a cos y into b is all the same so that's what the geometrical interpretation of the scalar product it is the mag magnitude of one into the component of the other that is b along the first one that is a so like this you can understand the dot product then what further we can see further things what we can know from the products we will see here in the scalar product other properties i am writing again here just for completion for reference that is the basic definition from which we get all properties suppose the vectors are in the same direction A is same direction, B also is same direction. So both are in the same direction. Then what will be the angle T phi here? Becomes equal to zero. When phi is zero, see what happens. It becomes A B cos zero, that is A B because cos zero is one. that is simply magnitudes are multiplied here so when the two vectors are in the same direction dot product is given by ab cos of phi any angle may be there it is only a fraction maximum value is 1 you can know cos value maximum will be 1 so if you have any other angle the product will have lesser value than this so you will get in this case a dot b will be maximum so if you want to get a maximum product from two physical quantities they must be in the same direction like the example i gave just now the force you are applying is in a different direction than displacement then the product is not maximum if you have the force and the displacement same direction the work done will be maximum in the direction you can understand that here so similarly similarly you can see further another important thing when phi is equal to 90 suppose what is a dot b now A B cos 90. You know cos 90 is zero. That means this becomes zero. That is dot product of two vectors becomes zero when the angle between them is 90 degrees. That means A and B are like this. This is A. This is B. Angle is 90 degrees. So if you find two vectors give a dot product equal to zero, you can say it must be two mutually perpendicular vectors there so that's what you can understand similarly you can say say phi is equal to pi that means 180 degrees so a dot b equal to ab cos pi cos pi is minus 1 so you will get minus ab so you can see this ab is maximum zero is less than ab all right minus ab is still less that means you will get minimum dot product if they are in opposite directions you want in the example i gave you if you want to move the body along this direction you apply the force in this direction what happens the work done will be least there this force will not be much useful in moving in the direction at all so least work can be done in that case minimum <laughs> that is one aspect which you can see that mean depending upon the angle between the vectors also the value of the dot product will change then next suppose we have a dot b a dot b is a b cos phi just now we said what about b dot a then is of a it is b here a yeah, angle between them is anyway this is b this is a angle is phi only between them so this also cos phi that means these two are equal this is nothing but a dot b so a dot b is equal to b dot a that means whichever you keep further earlier or later commutatively you can work so we can say 
the dot product is commutative we say. Understand? Then this is the third second point we see. Then see third point what also we can understand here. Suppose there is a vector like this a dot b plus c you want to say. B is a different vector, C is a different vector, A is a different vector. B plus C is still a different vector. How do you get this? You want to do this operation, you can do like this. A dot D. What is D? D is nothing but B plus C. So, at first take B plus C, find out separately and then find dot product with it. That is one way of doing it. So, we can write this as like this. That is what this equation means. Another way of making it is same thing. You can say a dot b plus b dot c. You can do like this also. Just like your algebraic multiplication. So find out a dot b separately, a dot c separately, sorry, a dot c separately, and then add both of them. So in that case, we do it, we will get the same result as what you are getting here as a dot d. These two are going to be equal. This is we say the dot product is distributive. You can distribute the dot product like this separately also. So, this properties of the dot product can be used while working with the products with vectors there. Then, how to multiply the unit vectors? See what will happen there. Or before going to that, one more important thing we will see. Suppose you find dot product of two vectors, A and B, we have, you know how, how you have to do it. Suppose both vectors are same, you want to find out A dot A, then what will you get? A magnitude of A, A magnitude of A, cause of angle between them. A and A means they are the same vectors, they are parallel in the same direction. So, therefore, the, it is 0. So, what you get is a square. So, two same vectors are uh, put to dot product, you will get a square there, square of the magnitude of the vector. That is another point to be remembered. Now, you take unit vectors, i is there and i is there, i dot i is there suppose. Like just now what we have seen, i a dot a. Both are same vectors along x axis only. Magnitude of this one is 1. So, 1 square will come there. 1 square means 1 only. i dot i is equal to 1. Similarly, what about j dot j now? You can tell yourself. It is also 1. And k dot k, needless to say, it is also 1. So, same type of unit vectors also will give equal to 1. The magnitudes are multiplied because square of magnitude of the unit vectors is always equal to 1, each one even being separately 1. Therefore, i dot i is equal to j dot j equal to k dot k, all are equal to 1. Then, take the other case, i dot j. See what is this? i is in the x direction, j is in the y direction. The angle between them is 90 degrees. So, if you write like this, according to the same rule, 1 into 1 into cos 90. Just now I told you, when two vectors are mutually perpendicular, the dot product vanishes, it becomes 0. So, that means this becomes equal to 0. i dot j is equal to 0. Then what about j dot i? I said a dot b is equal to b dot a. So, even this is 0. i dot j is 0, j dot i also is 0 because they are mutually perpendicular vectors. Now, similarly j dot k. j is in the y direction, k is in the z direction, y and z directions also are mutually perpendicular. 
So, here also you will find 0. Similarly, k dot j is also 0. Similarly, k dot i suppose, even that is 0, because they are x and z directions, they are also mutually perpendicular, x, y, z directions are 3 mutually perpendicular directions, therefore even this is 0. So, therefore, i dot k also is equal to 0. Remember this regarding the unit vectors. Why should you remember this? Because when you represent vectors in unit vector representation form, then you have to find dot product, then this knowledge helps you. How will it? I will show you an example. Suppose we have vectors here, vector A given as A x i A y j A z k in the unit vector representation here. Similarly, we have got another vector B as B x i B y j and B z k. Now, you have to find A dot B suppose. That means, put this A x i A y j A z k dot B x i B y j B z k. Multiply like ordinary multiplication because distributive law I told you just now you can multiply with each one separately. So, you can take x a x i multiply the whole thing then a y multiply the whole thing and put it you will see what result you will get. If you do like that for the first one I will show you a x i dot b x i a x i dot b x i comes here. That means, magnitudes can be separated separately, directions there. So, you can write this as a x b x i dot i. Similarly, if you go to next one a y I wrote the first term a x with this one go to second term a x b y here i and j then the third one a x b z i dot k in this you can see i dot j is 0 i dot k also is 0. So, these two things get cancelled. So, you will get only one term in that. Similarly, if you go to the next term multiplied there, you are left with only one term here, where you get the same vectors. Other things will be 0. Similarly, third component a z b z k dot k will come, other two things will become 0. Because when you multiply the other terms, same vectors won't be there. It will have to be some other vector, either i dot j, j dot k, k dot i will come definitely in other two terms. You can check up and see. So, therefore, what happens? They become reduced to 0. So, the whole thing becomes like this now a x b x i into i is equal to 1, a y b y j into j also equal to 1, a z b z that is also equal is j k into k also is equal to 1. So, that is the value of dot product a dot b. 
So it becomes very easy now. Suppose you have got two vectors given the x, the component form like this. You can directly multiply the components and add them up. That was gives you the scalar product there. That's one advantage what we can see. Another thing is, by definition, we have just now said it is a b cos phi. So what does it mean? Cos phi is equal to a dot b by a b. A dot b is this now. Put in the common component form, it is this. So it is a x b x a y b y a z b z into magnitude. When the vector is given in this way, the magnitude of this vector is given by told in earlier module x square a y square, a z square. Again, b x square, b y square, b z square. If you can remember this as formula, a x into, if you represent two vectors in this way, you can represent this way, then you can get angle between the vectors also from the components directly like this. You can get like this, angle between these two vectors a and b can be obtained by knowing the dot product and dividing by the magnitudes in product there. So, this helps us working with the vectors very easily. That is why we told in the earlier module representation of the vector in the unit, way, unit vector method becomes much useful even for multiplication of vectors to be followed. We take some example and see how it comes. There are two vectors here i minus 2j plus k. I repeat again, this is a different problem, i plus 2j minus k and then another vector is i plus j minus 2k. Let us do the problem again, I repeat to tell you. There are two vectors given here, a and b, one is i plus 2j minus k minus i plus j minus 2k and we are asked to find the angle between them, angle between the vectors. It is given by formula what I just now told you, the dot product by the magnitude. What is the dot product here? Multiply this, x component, y component, z component, that is the dot product. So, here it is minus 1, plus 2, plus 2 again, minus minus plus, therefore, 2, divided by magnitude of this one, square root of a, a x square, quotient is 1 here, so square is 1, here it is 4, here it is 1, again minus 1 square, here also it is 1 plus 1 plus 4. So, this is 4 minus 1, it becomes 3. Here it is root 6 into root 6. Root 6 into root 6 is 6 itself. So, this becomes equal to 3 by 6, r is equal to half. It is equal to half. Cos phi is equal to half means phi is equal to cos inverse half, that means 60 degrees. Cos 60 is half, you know. So, we can like that find the angle between the vectors so simply by just knowing the dot product and applying the formula there. Then, I give another example to find dot product here. It is given that sometimes the problem can be given like this. Suppose there is a force given by 6i 12j plus 8k that is the force and it moves a body from one point to another point, say point 1 to point, point 1 to 2. It is given like this. This point is given in the coordinates 
like this. 2 minus 3, 4. From the real point here, I will call it as P1, P2 here, 1 minus 2 plus 3. The three coordinates. That is how it is given. That means there is a vector like this. Then this vector displacement S is given as P2 minus P1. That is displacement vector. That point that is from the origin, whatever I take. So that component minus this. You can represent this vector as P1. This indicates this is x component is 2, y component is minus 3, z component is 4. So, that means here also similarly for P2 also that means we can write minus 2j plus 3. This is the vector position vector for P2 we call it. We call it as position vector means vector showing the position there. So, there is minus 1 minus 2j plus 3 that is it. Minus this one that is 2i minus 3j plus 4 that is the displacement vector plus 4k. The displacement vector is also k is there. So, this is displacement vector if you take this the position, the position of this one minus the position of this one. That means x components are separated, y components are separated, z components are separated in the representation. That's all. So you can write this as i minus 2i. See the separation. See the difference here. This is one i. This is minus 2i. So it becomes i. And j minus 2j here minus into minus plus plus 3j. So it becomes plus j. 3 minus 4, that means minus k, minus 1 will come there. Subtraction. Subtract the coefficients. 1 minus 2, minus 2, minus 3, that means minus of minus 3, that means plus 3. 3 minus 4, minus 1. So, this is the position vector, displacement vector. Yes. You are asked to find out the work done now. It is dot product of these two. Sometimes problems are given like this. Find the work done when the force is given by this and displacement by this. Then multiply this as here. 6 i plus 12 j plus 8 k dot minus i plus j minus k. Now multiply you see in the same way like what you heard earlier. 6 into minus 1 is minus 6, 12 into plus 1 is 12, 8 into minus 1 that is minus 8. How much is that? Minus 14 plus 12, so minus 2 units. So much of work is done. So, you can find out the work directly from dot product from this way. So, that is how sometimes problems can be given. You can know what some problems given in your module also and try to understand the importance of this. Suppose you want to, if you try to find out the angle between the vectors, you get dot product 0, immediately you can say it is equal to 90 degrees. Suppose you get a value for cos, cos theta when you get in the same way as I told you now, a dot b by a b, suppose you get a negative value, clearly shows it is not in the first quadrant. That means, you will, it will be in the obtuse angle now. The angle between the two vectors will be something more than 90 degrees. You will get the answer there. So, like that by the very dot product knowledge only, we will be able to get all this information. Attempt problems more, get more to work about these things and get more experience in and understanding of them. Thank you.